Welcome to the Root of Power podcast, where I teach you how to chase your joy, find alignment, and create a life and a business that you love using actionable methods, interviews, and inspiring stories from people who know that true freedom is found within. I'm your host, your always hype woman and sometimes ass kicker, Amanda Chills, and I am so proud of you for choosing to step into your power. Come along, we've got dreams to build. Okay, my love, I have put everything that I offer for free on one page so that we are not doing more work than we have to because why would we do that? Hashtag work smarter, not harder. So livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. You are going to find everything I've created for not only leveling up in your personal life and building a life that you love, but leveling up in your business life and building a business that you love. Okay livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. Love you. Hi. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm excited to catch up and also introduce people to you and your energy. Yeah, same. It's It's been a while since we spoke, but yeah, mm-hmm. I, I always love your energy. You're just such a beautiful soul and you Aww. have the best humor. Like the things Don't that come out of your I mouth, I'm it. like, it just warms my soul. <laughs> I paid her to say that, guys. Um, how are you? What have you been up to? Well, tell us, tell us who you are and how you be and yeah, what you like to do. Absolutely, I'm Kate Vasquez, and I'm actually, I mean, I'm on a journey. But then, who isn't on a journey, right? And I, and that's what I realized. Like this, this is a journey to really discover who we really are, and that's. Mm-hmm. You know, because when I when I was younger, I thought, okay, I'm going to go into medicine. I became a physician assistant. I thought that's who I am. But yeah. once I became a physician assistant, like I love learning about the body and just the intricacies of it, and and you know, just the innate intelligence. It's like we don't even have to think about breathing or think about our heart beating, and the body just has incredible incredible ability mm-hmm. to heal. Um, but I being don't... in yeah, being in Western medicine, though, I realized like I wasn't really helping people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wasn't helping people to heal. Yeah. And um, yeah, I guess growing up, my mom was just uh, from Poland. So anytime we would get sick, she would have all these holistic remedies. Yeah. So, She's yeah, like, let me boil orange peels and you drink the orange peel water. Yeah, right. And it's like, just yeah, shit, by the way, <laughs> I would have, I know, I know. But yeah, tea with honey and lemon and just, yeah different things like that. And I remember she had these like purple crystals. I don't even know what they were some kind of minerals. Like if we had a UTI, we had to sit in the water with, <laughs> there was like no taking antibiotics there. and it worked. And, yeah. you know, some like going into medicine, hoping like, okay, I'm going to learn about all these holistic mm-hmm. things. And nope, it's just like, nope, here's a, here's a prescription for this. And here's a prescription for that. And right. I realized, yeah, it just, it wasn't helping anybody. And yeah. I'm just grateful that I, I learned about functional medicine I came mm-hmm. across Dr. Mike Mark Hyman. So if you haven't heard of him, he I would I would say he's probably like the pioneer in functional medicine, um, just really leading the way. But um, yeah, I dove into it. I, I decided to leave being a PA and just jump into mm-hmm. functional medicine. And it's been it's been an incredible journey because I had a lot of health issues. I had gut issues, constipation, and bloating, just like foul smelling gas. <laughs> had no idea where this was coming from. Mm-hmm. Only to realize, like, I had poor gut health, like, no good gut bacteria. I needed support with digestion. Mm -hmm. And I also was sensitive to certain foods. Like, to this day, I still can't have gluten and tomatoes. And just recently, I found out red meat gives me some problems. So, (laughs) I know. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I love red meat, but it doesn't love me. But that's okay. (laughs) I I enjoy fish anyway. I'm more of a a fish and seafood kind of person. And so, yeah, it's just like really learning a lot about my body and what makes my body feel good and feel its best. Because I remember in my 20s, I was just also not only having gut issues, but exhausted. Mm -hmm. And 12 hour days in the urgent care and come home, just like my legs just felt heavy. And I was just physically, mentally, emotionally just exhausted. And I didn't know why, but I realized later once I got through functional medicine and also yeah. with my mindset and personal development, learned about mm. energy and, and nervous system regulation, doing Joe Dispenza's world. I'm like, oh, I was in a survival mode. Hello. <laughs> no Hello. wonder. I was running from a great 24 system seven on a system that was not functioning well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, 
I'm not the only one who's like constantly living in in survival, yeah. you know, just Oh my god, it's it, honestly yeah. the the nine I would say like 95% of people. And even that I think is like a low ball. Oh, for number. sure. Yeah, I recognize yeah. like the clients I was working with also were in a survival state. And so it's like they're coming to oh. me to get to the root cause and it's like, okay, Let's figure out, you know, what foods to avoid and remove so we can heal your gut. And, yeah. you know, here's some supplements for that. And then mm -hmm. supplements for your, everybody's cortisol was either too high or too low just because yeah. of the constant stress. Mm -hmm. And then hormonal balances. I also had um, a hormonal imbalance because I was also on birth control for acne. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just just so much. And, and I Isn't it crazy that. how they'll just like dole out hormones for that and... I know it's like hormone okay. balance. It's like, oh, just take the pill. They'll they'll solve everything, and right. you know, it, it doesn't solve the problem. And sometimes it makes women worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, it's it's wild how like how many people are just traumatized children walking around, yeah. not even realizing like that they feel as bad as they do. Not only for like trauma survival mode, but also like literally physically, because it's just their normal. Right. Like their bodies have been inflamed and sick and whatever for so long and they're just like oh like this is normal everyone feels like this and it's like yeah maybe everyone feels like that um yeah. i don't know if you've read the myth of normal by gabor mate no not that one yet but oh I my god other books. yeah you're going to love it it's so good sometimes it's so intense i have to like put it down for a while mm -hmm. but it is incredible and he's what he talks about is so right. He's like, so many people are so sick. They make themselves sick. They're not dealing with their trauma. They don't know how they're getting handed these medications, which sometimes they have their place, of course. Yeah. But he's like, you know, they're not addressing the root cause. And like, obviously, Gabor Mate is a doctor and he, it's such a good book. Um, yeah. yeah like I, so I love people, his work. He, wonderful. What, what a man. Um <laughs> But it's like so many people are just traumatized kids walking around in adult bodies. Yeah. Who feel like shit. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like <laughs> so sad. Yeah. And that's what I realized in, in, in functional medicine because I not only had all those health issues, but I had anxiety. Mm -hmm. I had anxiety for over 20 years. Well, of course you did. Your body's yeah. like, you bitch. Because I, well, one, I learned from my mom. I love my mom mm -hmm. so much, but like anytime something went was out of her control or just right. didn't go the way she expected, or we didn't do things that she expected us to do. Yeah. She'd freak out. I remember her coming yeah. home and just start yelling. Like if something was out of place and wow. or we forgot it, she would just start yelling. And I'm just like hiding. Like, yeah, it's mm -hmm. very traumatized. Like, oh my gosh, trying to like be the good girl and not do anything yeah. wrong. Food bringer know? is angry. Yeah. And I'm yeah. just like, you know, I learned how to, to go into people pleasing at a young mm -hmm. age just to make mm -hmm. make them happy so she wouldn't, yeah, explode. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't help that she's she's a Gemini, so she's got two personalities. It's like <laughs> my friends saw her as just like this sweet, incredible Polish woman. Yeah. And it's like, oh no. And she was to see. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to see her at home. Um, yeah. They're like, I People love say that mom. about my dad. And, like, and they're like, he's so fun. And I'm like, he is now. <laughs> yeah, but I remember him throwing tantrums in restaurants and forcing yeah. all of us to walk out. Yeah, absolutely. And, but I can I can look at my mom now and realize mm -hmm. like, you know, she did the best she could with the resources she had. She didn't know how to process her emotions, how, right. how to adapt to stress. And right. I'm so grateful for my journey because then I learned how to regulate my nurse, nervous system, how to right. process my emotions, how to heal those traumas. And I do believe that by me doing the work on myself, mm -hmm. she started to shift and change because I, before well, I does, started to, because like yeah. relationships are such a <laughs> co-creation and a balance that like yeah. if one person adjusts, the other person in order to keep equilibrium will adjust even without knowing yeah. really what they're doing. So it's yeah. like, yeah. and I remember thinking like, I wish she would change. I'm like, Oh, I would look, <laughs> I remember looking at my, my friend's mom. Um, we were neighbors with our friends growing up and she was just so loving, so warm. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I wish my mom could be like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but then I had to just let go of that. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. my mom is who she is. I just have to yeah. just love her for who she is and just yeah. recognize she's doing the best that she can. And once I started to shift my perspective about mm -hmm. my mom, I think that's when things really started to change with our, our relationship. Yeah. And I mean, thankfully she, once she retired, she actually wasn't stressed out all the time. Yeah. So that also <laughs> helped too. But 
Um, but yeah, I just, I, I learned so much and recognize, yeah, just all yeah. The, the traumas that we're carrying and how, yeah, we just, we just don't have the tools. Yeah. We don't have the tools to, to navigate. I'm just so grateful that I dove in and, and took, I mean, what really set that off was, um, about, I want to say six years ago, within the first year of mine and my husband's marriage, mm-hmm. I was so anxious, so overwhelmed, like, you know, just didn't know how to process and handle things. And I would come home and vent about my day. And, yeah. and there was just a lot of pressure to working in, in Western medicine. It's just like, mm-hmm. I felt like, you know, uh, if I didn't cross my T's or dot my I's, I, I was afraid to, you know, mm-hmm. or document enough. I was afraid I was going to get, you know, uh, get sued, get, get fired. Sued. Exactly. Yeah. And then the patients back. weren't, yeah. Oh, yeah. The patients, if I didn't give them what they wanted, they would give me mm-hmm. a bad score and survey. Mm-hmm. And then that would, was a reflection of like, you know, my care. And I'm like, right. no, but I'm like, I want to help people. And so yeah. it was just, it was a very stressful time. And I would just bent up to my husband and he would try to coach me, bless his heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it got to a point where it was, just, it was, it was very challenging because we we're also like learning how to just like live together and, right. and be, and I'm like, be oh, married. Yeah, I, I can't just think about me anymore. Yeah. And, um, it was tough. It was tough. But it got to a point where he like became my, instead of my husband, he became my coach. Mm-hmm. And I remember this conversation, um, one day we're just, we're sitting on his old, ugly leather brown couch, which is <laughs> pretty much all the furniture that we had at the time because we had just moved in. And, um, and I remember looking at him, like, we, I think we got an argument or something, but I just, I just saw the sadness and just like the unhappiness mm-hmm. and pain in his eyes. And he was just like, I don't know how much longer I can keep doing this. And mm-hmm. I was like, when he said that, I just started trembling, holding back tears. And my, yeah. my, I felt my heart ripped to a thousand pieces. Cause I'm like sitting in front of me with my best friend. He was my soulmate. Yeah. And I'm like, the thought of losing him yeah. was so painful. But then there was also a voice inside of me that said, divorce is not an option. Yeah. And I was willing to do whatever it took. I recognized like, okay, there's a problem here. I need to change mm-hmm. something about myself. Cause I'm like, we keep yeah. going on this path. We are going to end up in a divorce. And so yeah, he ended up sending me off to Tony Robbins and leash the power within. And, That's so funny. Uh, so he was like, I don't know, but Tony, <laughs> Tony will do what he can. Yeah, because like everything he was trying to coach me through was stuff he learned through Tony Robbins because he sure. went, went to Tony Robbins before I did. But I didn't understand any of it. I'm like, what are you talking right, about? Because it was all like, like out of con- He's like, yeah. I don't know. He's handing you like some <laughs> tool that you've never seen. And he's like, use this. And you're like... I don't know what to do. Exactly. Yeah. And he would just get over things so quickly. And I'm still like holding on to like replaying yeah. in my mind like a week later and like, yeah. yeah, just holding on to everything. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, no, like we Why haven't you figured fine? this out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I went and it changed the trajectory of my life. Oh, and I so know. yeah, I have that, uh, you know, I was thinking about and actually posted a reel today too. It's just like, you know, being grateful for all the challenges in our life, Yeah, you know, cause I, I do believe in the power of gratitude. Gratitude is so powerful. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a high vibrating frequency that mm-hmm. my goal is to live in that state because a lot of these imbalances and anxiety, you know, is really fear that it, it vibrates mm-hmm. the same frequency at a hundred Hertz, but gratitude, you know, is, is, is above love, which is at mm-hmm. 500. And so I was thinking about gratitude and most of us, when we think about gratitude, we think about the things that we're grateful for that we have yeah. that we tend to take for granted for, but are we grateful for the challenges? And so I'm just, I, yeah. I reflect back over my life and I'm just so grateful for that moment. Cause that catapulted me into learning about the mind, learning about, yeah, the limiting beliefs that I had and, and pattern yeah. conditioning and things, things that weren't serving me, that was causing the anxiety, which yeah. also contributed to migraines. <laughs> right. And all the and other so, things as well. Cause if you're constantly in a fear state, it's like mm-hmm. obviously incredibly stressful. Yeah, exactly. And I realized like, yeah, at the end of the day on this journey, I'm like, all there really is, is love or fear. So if we can really boil it down to these two principles, like let's make it really simple. Yeah. Are we focused on fear, which is that's where anxiety stems from. That's where depression stems from. That's where frustration, overwhelm, anger, resentment, whatever. And I call those low vibrating emotional states, mm-hmm. which is basically what we're going to feel when we're in that sympathetic survival state. Yeah. Um, or, you know, can we focus on love? Yeah. And that's going to shift our frequency. That's going to shift our energy. It's going to allow us 
to heal. It's going to take us mm-hmm. out of that survival state back into that parasympathetic state where we're able to heal our bodies and, and think <laughs> and think. Yes. And that's think. a good it's point. Like, and think and <laughs> engage, right? Cause it's like, you're operating from fear. People are, yeah. It, it's literally like, you know, when you back a dog into a corner, like they're not looking to connect at that point. Right. They're looking to get away from you. Exactly. So there's, it just loses so much. Like I have clients say often, and I, it's funny, sometimes I'll have a lot of clients say the same thing in the same week. And I'm like, oh, this is the theme that we're working on this week, universe. I hear you. And I've had a lot of clients this week say they just feel like an island. Mm. And they just said that phrase. And I'm just like, Mm. well, you know, people have boats. And then they're like, for whatever reason, they're like, oh, well, I'm not alone. And I'm like, you may feel like an island, but like people have boats. Like they may be trying to reach out to you. Yeah, and they're like, huh, well, that makes sense. But like when people are not feeling well and also people tend to retreat and then oh, those limiting beliefs come and that conditioning, unhelpful conditioning comes. And yeah, and I'm just like, sweet babies. It doesn't have to be this hard. It doesn't. It just no. doesn't. It doesn't yeah, have to be because if we, yeah, just. And it's literally just skills and like right. changing some things that, you know, kind of suck into things that like don't suck they're actually helpful and then yeah. ta-da, life is <laughs> and I'm just like I'm forever telling people like it doesn't have to be this hard no, no. like life relationships business they it doesn't have to be this hard exactly and but like, that's all they know so and turn on all we have to do is just turn on the lighthouse and ask literally for help. ask for help literally. and like you said and ask for help from like you know, people who are helpful. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Not just don't ask for help from people who's <laughs> And that's where that, that discernment comes in and, and knowing like, is this person, you know, again, going back to fear of love, is this person going to speak mm-hmm. love into me yeah. or are they just going to put me down yeah. and beat me down? Cause obviously if they're going to beat you down, that's not the the person to reach out to or not to be in up. relationship with. And, and what I, I realized, like, as I continue to do the work on myself, um, I also realized I started finding myself surrounded by people that were like-minded that yeah. could be there. So when I did have those moments, cause yeah, I still have moments where I'm beating myself up or li- have limiting beliefs. Yeah, right? sure. We're like, we're being dramatic gremlins. <laughs> That's what I call it. And then they were human, you know, things yeah. are happening. It's like, and we're not perfect. We're right. not perfect. And that's another thing. I had this this pressure on myself to be perfect, yeah. you know, um, which so once fun, I realized, huh? So fun, that pressure. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. And once I realized, like, no one's that's perfect. Right. It's just, perfection is just an illusion. It's, it's right. really a cover-up for resistance, mm-hmm. you know? Resistance of just resisting, you know, being who we, who we really are mm-hmm. and just you know, letting our, our light shine and letting people, yeah, just, just see, you know, our heart and yeah. And, um, I yeah, much I prefer afraid. authenticity to perfection. Cause it's like, you don't know who people are, if their intention, if their goal is to be perfect, it's like, but I know you a little fucked up. So like, <laughs> where's that part? Like it, it removes the me too moments, you know, where it's like, <sighs> you know, I, you know, I, I spilled coffee on myself yesterday yeah. morning and people are like, Oh, me too. I've done that versus like, right. I've, I've never done anything <laughs> I've never, wrong in my yeah, life. I think, like, I think there's a, yeah, there's a saying like, if, if you're perfect, there's no one to relate to. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Literally. If everyone was perfect, we wouldn't be able to relate to each other. Yeah. So it's, 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 like that goes, goes perfectly with like, yeah, I'm like, I'm a goofball. I am caught like the other day, I just like spilled cashew milk all over the place. And in the past, I would have been really upset with myself. Yeah. But instead, I was like, oh, I just gave myself a cashew milk bath. And I'm like, now my skin's <laughs> going to be moisturized. I'm moisturizing. <laughs> and it's like, you know, how much more fun is life when like you don't take everything so seriously? Like, I'm someone who, like, anyone who has probably talked to me for more than three minutes understands I think quite viscerally they're like I don't really take things seriously except the ser- serious things there are some things I take seriously right. but like that list is really not very long yeah it's, very- <laughs> it's just not I'm like not yeah. you know so many things are not that fucking serious and then there's some people who treat 
obviously not that this is a conscious choice, but like who treat everything like it's life or death. And I'm just like, well, that sounds like the opposite of a good time. Yeah. And so I don't want to live in that space. Like nothing yeah. is that no. serious. Things that are life or death are okay. Yeah, sure. But like, that's really not that many things. Yeah. So I'm just that's here to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, okay. it's all about perspective. That's right. really what it is. We have, and that's what I, I recognize too. I'm like, I was looking at, through this one lens, this mm. one perspective of my life. And that was like through like, yeah, fear and just trying yeah. to people please and be perfect. But mm-hmm. once I recognize, oh, I don't have to look that lens. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm like, it was exhausting. Exactly. It was exhausting. Yeah. And it, it definitely wasn't making me happy and I wasn't yeah. fulfilled and I didn't have peace. And so yeah. part of this, this journey of healing was recognizing that I was chasing these things outside mm. of myself mm-hmm in order for me just to feel happy, to feel peace. Cause I yeah. thought, and that's the conditioning and yeah. you know, unfortunately it's like with watching TV and social media, it's like instant gratification. If we get this mm-hmm. and you know, one, one day right. we get that house or we go on this vacation or get whatever, yeah. we'll finally be happy. We'll finally have peace. Yeah. But no, like jokes on you. Happiness comes from within. <laughs> Exactly. And once I finally like really understood that at a soul level, I was like, oh, that's something that I I talk with clients about all the time. And I ask them, so like my dad's from Cuba, like off the boat from Cuba. So, you know, immigrant. Mm -hmm. And I, when I talk to a lot of my clients, obviously grew up in the South, are American, um, majority white. And I have found it to be like a white American thing to be just that instant because it's our culture, right? And like, obviously yep. people of color experience it as well, Yes, where it's like the chase, 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 I'll be happy when, but then the goalpost always moves and then they're fucking yep. miserable their whole lives versus like, exactly. when I think of people from the Caribbean, people from like the West Indies, like one, they just don't complain. I've never heard my dad complain a day in my life. I'm 33 years old. Mm-hmm. He doesn't do it. Wow. But I don't know anyone who's Caribbean who complains. I don't know anyone who's Caribbean or West Pacific Islander, like New Zealand, Hawaiian. Like those are people that like when I imagine them and anyone I've ever met who is that mm-hmm. um, ethnicity, yeah, is so laid back, is so mm-hmm. like whatever, life is good, I'll figure it out. Let me make a joke out of it, let me make light out of it. Like the worst shit can happen to these people, and they're like mm-hmm. figuring it out, making a joke about it and like continuing to live life. And I'm just like, their lives are not necessarily better as in have more privilege, have less problems, whatever, but like they're infinitely better because they get what a lot of people don't, which is that your happiness is your choice and it's an internal state, not related to your external circumstances. Like when, like I tell people, I'm like, you could drop my dad in the middle of the Ukraine Russia conflict and he would be happy as a fucking clam. He would be like dealing both sides and he'd be like, whatever, I'm like smuggling on both sides. But like, <laughs> he would be happy. And you could yeah. drop him anywhere on the planet in any conflict. And he's like, well, I'm going to find a way to build a community and be happy. Like he just is happy no matter the circumstances. Yeah. And I, so when I'm like explaining that concept to people, I'm like, have you ever met anyone who's like Jamaican, Dominican, Puerto Rican, Cuban, or like Pacific Islander? Um, like Hawaiian and they're like well yeah and if they say no I'm like okay but like think of a Caribbean person and if they say yes I'm like how are they and they're like well they're just happy and I'm like right exactly like it's a choice it is a choice yeah so let's just do that because being uptight and having a stick up your ass for the rest of your life is like zero (laughs) percent fun yeah so I'd rather not (laughs) like I just don't want to go that way and then it's hard to connect you know it's so hard to connect you don't want to connect with people who are uptight. <laughs> no, who are uptight, who are miserable. Like I, I'm sure you've talked to people who like have a problem for every solution, right? And I'm just like, die, die. Like I cannot talk to you. I don't care. Die. Like whatever. You are so determined to be miserable. Drown in your three inches of water. Like I have no, <laughs> no patience for people like that at all. I'm just like fucking die. Like I don't care. Get away from me. But nobody wants to connect with those people unless other people who are misery loves company, of course. But. I'm just like, no, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cause not fun. You know, our, it's like, everything comes down to energy too. Like we are energy beings mm-hmm. and 
you know, we have to be careful what energy we're absorbing. Mm -hmm. Like for example, my, my husband and his friend were playing rap music and if you guys love rap music, awesome. But for me, like I come out of meditation, they're like playing rap music while they're working out. And all of a sudden I start feeling anxious. And I was like, I was <laughs> like this. And I'm like, just whatever was playing in the words, I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I went and grabbed my headphones and I put yeah. on meditation music and instantly I calmed down because yeah. I'm like, whoa, I'm that frequency. I'm picky about music and the words they use like I will skip a song in a heartbeat if it's like especially the sad breakup songs where they're like I'm lonely and heartbroken and no one loves me and I'll be alone and I'm like nope 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 yeah. nope like so, I just I can't that language is so powerful and most people don't it, realize it really is like our yeah. words are powerful but also yeah the inner the emotional state mm -hmm. we're in that we're giving off people can yeah. feel that so yeah if, if someone's moody or angry you're gonna feel that and it's it's almost like yeah alerting your your nervous system like danger yeah. danger don't don't go near yeah. them so or like that's also a lesson in like being grounded and able to so like something that like i had to learn as a th well i guess i didn't have to learn it's something i learned as a therapist to do is like be at um ground level zero no matter where other people are so they're always yeah. regulating to me yeah so I got very good at like staying mm -hmm. grounded staying neutral even if other people are in like literal hysterics yeah and so that's like yes other people impact and like people can learn to say like you do whatever like you can do whatever you're doing but like it doesn't shake me right. because yeah. my foundation is that um that's solid so like yeah that's valuable too but you also you're very into human design which is like yeah. such a fun talk about like self-knowledge <laughs> tell us about that yeah oh my gosh I love love human design because yeah on this journey of just really figuring out who who I am as a person mm -hmm. and once I recognize okay these are my limiting beliefs and and patterns and conditioning and thing and when I dove into human design, it was like reading. And and when whatever I was reading, I was like, oh my gosh, this is spot on to who yeah. I am. But it was like, I was afraid to really just show mm -hmm. up fully as who I was. But in a way, just validated my my gifts and yeah. what I'm here, here to do and how I'm to show up in this world and interact yeah. And so, uh, yeah, there's four different energy types in human, well, technically five, because one's a subtype of one of the types, mm -hmm. but there's, uh, yeah, the five types. That, so it's the generators and the subtype is many gens. So manifesting generators and then manifestors. So basically what, what I think is like the manifesting generators are just a combination of the generators and manifestors. And then there's projectors and reflectors. I am a projector which is the second common type. Um, so the manifesting generator and generators are most of the population and you have projectors. Mm -hmm. Then you have manifestors and, and reflectors are the rarest type. So projectors are just here to be the guide and, and just really help people figure out solutions to problems. Yeah. And I realize I'm like, oh, as I'm reading it. Oh, yeah, I'm like, I, I do that. I help people figure out root causes of what's going Literally. on physically in their body. And then also diving into the mental and emotional piece too. But I'm also really good at, at looking different systems and seeing what's working and what's mm -hmm. not. So yeah, being in Western medicine, I recognize what was not working. <laughs> so jumping into functional medicine, I could see what was working better. Um, so yeah, I love being able to look at different systems and kind of like come up with my own yeah. unique model. And, and there's um, a, a profile. So you get a profile, which are two numbers and I'm a five, one profile the five profile. I'm like, I'm here to just kind of like be outside the box. Mm. And just, um, and I didn't realize this. I didn't realize, cause I'm also an Aquarius according to, to astrology. I didn't realize like Aquarians are, are, are rebels. They don't They're really also like outside being, the box. Yeah. Yeah. They don't like being fit into a box, but I realized growing up, I was put into a box mm. because I just, I felt like I had to be in a box in order to fit in. Yeah. But that's which then if we're going against our nature, obviously yeah. is anxiety inducing. Exactly. It's wild that's how like, like all those things. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no interact. wonder I was experiencing anxiety because yeah. I realized anxiety was just me being disconnected from who I really mm. was and, and allowing myself to be who I was. Cause I was afraid yeah. of what people would think of me. Mm -hmm. 
And that goes to those limiting beliefs because my right. core limiting beliefs were I'm not good enough and I'm not worthy. Mm. And so, so yeah, when I'm like learning about them, I'm like, oh, like I was excited. I'm like, oh, I get to go against the grain and just yeah. think outside of the box. Sure. And, and yeah, I was like, woohoo, then let's have some fun. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and, and the one profile, I'm like, I just love to learn. I love to learn. Like mm. I'm here to learn different things and just that share them sense. with the world. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, well, that makes sense. Like where I'm at here, my journey, right. like constantly oh. learning and just sharing <laughs> with the world and then being able to just blend different things, seeing yeah. what's working and um, create my own little way of just helping and serve people. And so, um, so yeah. And, and then also there's what's called authority type or authority, which is basically how we're to make decisions. And so mm-hmm. my authority is splenic. So and it makes sense because I'm very, very intuitive. Yeah. And I used to not listen to my intuition, but mm-hmm. I've learned like, yes, if I don't listen to my intuition, I'm going to regret it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I really like started tuning into my intuition and instead of like, oh, and projectors aren't here to also like work like eight to five or eight mm-hmm. to nine or something, yeah. um, nine to five, eight to eight to five, whatever. They're not here to work like eight hours and just constantly hustle and grind. Yeah. And that's what I had been 12 hours in urgent care. I'm like, no wonder I was exhausted. <laughs> right. I'm like constantly putting out my energy. And yeah, when you're working with someone, it's, it requires a lot of energy. Plus I absorbed a lot of energy yeah. from other people. So I had to learn how to set boundaries and not take on people's energy. So Very that useful. was really the biggest thing for me. And, um, and so, yeah, I re- recognize like, oh, it's best for me to work for like a few hours at a time mm-hmm. and where I take breaks during the day yeah. to really restore my energy. And so with that, that mindset, I, I went from like being exhausted and burnout mm-hmm. and really started supporting. Like how good energy. do you feel now? I feel amazing. Yeah. It's so <laughs> wild. But like working yeah. the way that your body and your mind works is, yeah, it just removes all the friction. Like it doesn't it really feel like does. you're walking uphill dragging 17 rabid raccoons on a leash. (laughs) Yeah. And my mantra, it's so funny because my mantra has always been just like, well, there's two. I'm like, work, work smarter, not harder. And Mm -hmm. then slow and steady runs the race. It's like the tortoise and the hare, right? Where the hare is just constantly... That's like my husband, my husband's a manifester. So I see him as a hair where he's constantly sprinting. He has these bursts of energy and he's got to go, 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 go and do things. And he's always turning around like, Hey, come on, catch up. Which Mm -hmm. reminds me of this time we're like, like, (laughs) yeah, I know we're like kayaking down rainbow Springs here. It's here in Florida. And I remember like, we're of course we're, we're paddling back. So we're going upstream. Mm -hmm. And I remember he's just like, Oh, they're just cranking it out. And would periodically stop. And I'm over here just slow and steady <laughs> wins the race, slow and steady wins the race. And it was so funny because I was able to keep up with him. We yeah. were able to get to the to the, the end at the same time. And he was like, how did you do that? I'm like, slow and steady. <laughs> and that's always like, in my mind. It like, takes the same amount of time. It does. And I'm like, and, and less energy. Mm. And that was the thing. I didn't have to sit there and and, and force myself and Mm. hustle and grind and push. Now he loves that. Yeah. Yeah. He's the manifester. He He needs to do that. He's a daredevil. And like, he just loves things that are just stimulating and exciting. And I'm like, that's great. But I'm like, no, I'm like, I got to preserve my energy. And Mm. just, if I'm going to yeah, push myself for, for a bit of a distance. Like I got to do it at my own pace and and that's okay. I used to like, try to keep up, you know, with the hair or the manifester Mm -hmm. or whoever I I used to. Yeah. But it was, it was so exhausting. And so my two mantras and just like, yeah, how can I do things that are smarter and not harder? (laughs) Literally. And that's where like figuring out the systems and things comes in mm-hmm. handy. Cause I'm like, okay, I, I do something one time and then I'm like, okay, how can I do this better and quicker and easier yeah. um, With less in my life? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then do things in a way that also feel good for me. I love that. And so, yeah. So human design has just really, I mean, there's so much more to it too. I and mean, there's the not self theme. Like for me, not self was, is experiencing bitterness Mm, and I realized, yeah, if I felt bitterness or even resentment, it mm. meant that I wasn't operating in alignment with who I am. Yeah. And there's more, more pieces to it. So like, you know, there's, uh, the, the strategy, which is wait for invitation. Like, mm. of course, as a projector, I love guiding people. So 
I'll, I'll use my family, for example, there would be things that they're going through and I want to give advice. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of resistance. But they're not ready back. yet. Yeah. And I learned finally, once I read about human design, like, no, mm -hmm. only give advice when it's asked for, because yeah. otherwise they're not going to receive it and you're going to experience bitterness and well, resentment. And, <laughs> and otherwise it's criticism. Right. And That's like, true. Yeah. People don't do well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even though it was like coming from a place of love because yeah. I'm like, I can see very, like, we're really good at just like seeing things from a big picture and perspective mm -hmm. and the little tweaks and things that they can do just to make yep. their life easier. But no, oh, people got to yeah. be open to receiving that right. and have to reach out and say, Hey, can you help me? Yeah. And then once, once that happened, then I felt, yeah, I felt successful. I felt mm -hmm. happy. That's Cause then they're asking and it's like, yeah, and exactly. Like, oh. Yeah. And it lit me up because I'm like, well, this is what yeah. I'm here for. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is this is what lights me up. And um, but so yeah, it, it it was like basically human design. When you are living in your design, you're uh, embodying who you are, but you're also shedding everything that you're not. Amazing. And it's a journey. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. It's you know, it takes time to really just try out these these different pieces. Because again, it's like. You know, I was used to hustle and grind and not really yeah. taking breaks. And I was used to, yeah, just giving my advice. But no, I had to like really take that pause and like yeah. my tongue and wait, wait for the invitation. And, and uh, so, yeah, I, I really started to, and, and also put boundaries around my energy and recognize yeah. like my energy is not for everyone <laughs> True. True. and that's okay. You know, and that's okay. So yeah. I, yeah, was able to make some, a lot of shifts and changes which has really helped me mentally, emotionally, and physically as well. Yeah. It's just so much less stressful when you're it is. living as <laughs> designed, literally. Yeah. I'm like, because for me, how I see my life is just moving through life with ease and flow mm, and love. happiness and peace. I'm like, that's all I really wanted at the end of the yeah. day. And so, yeah, this journey has led me to that point. And like I said, I'm, just, I'm grateful for all those experiences and challenges because it really helped me to see, okay, what's working, what's not, what do I need to learn? Yeah. What do I need to grow through? <laughs> what beliefs do I need to shed? Right. Where and, is the universe trying to make something painful so I change it? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks, universe. So sometimes we're stubborn. It, it, the universe has our back though. You yeah, know, it always does. So how's business been? How's that going? Yeah. So I've just, I've been working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, just really wow. diving, not into, not just functional medicine, but also mm -hmm. helping them with the the mental and the emotional healing. And um, I created a, a course, a podcast course called Already Enough, because I recognize like, yeah, on this journey, I'm like, okay, how can I provide this information to them Yeah, in a way? Because I'm like, I only have so much time and energy, right. you know, one-on-one, -on -one, but what can they take away that we have so that that way they can keep mm -hmm. learning they can keep growing and so yeah I created the the podcast course it's like five to 15 nice. minutes per episode because again I'm like I just want to give them like just just what they need mm -hmm. to make a powerful impact yeah in their life. and so yeah they they listen to this course while we work on yeah looking at the physical body Amazing. and imbalances and so like healing gut heal, supporting our adrenals supporting the hormones um helping them to just tune into their bodies again because that's another mm -hmm. thing i i realized like when we're so inflamed and stressed out we don't know like okay if we're having bloating like where is that coming from yeah <laughs> and so once we can yeah get the body back into that sim parasympathetic state mm -hmm. where it's calm it's calmed down and they start to feel better, feel more energized. Yeah. They're able to tune in. And this is where human design is really, really cool, especially with like generators and manifesting generators. They have um, the sacral authority. So they have this gut response. So yeah, for me, intuitive, it's just like this, this inner knowing, this gentle nudge, but they have this gut response, which is different. Like they'll get this like like butterfly or just like mm -hmm. this like excitement or this fire in their belly when something is right for them or yeah. they'll just get like this sinking like kind of like a punch in the gut Ugh. yeah like a no if something doesn't yeah. feel good for them but so i'm a generator and that's yeah that's yeah right. so yeah so yeah so you know you have that gut response yeah. i call it um, eating hot mayonnaise if something is a no because immediately i like, can't no absolutely yeah. 
Exactly. You know, yeah. No it, hot mayonnaise. It comes with a sound and a feeling. Right. <laughs> Literally. Just, just like you you just uh, demonstrated. Just like um, but yeah, if the gut's a mess, you know, it's really mm-hmm. hard to to, to connect it. to that gut yeah. response or yeah, just in that sympathetic state and yeah. just like stressed out, it's really hard to connect yeah. with that. But same thing, like for projectors, um, you know, and there's manifestors that have a splenicatory too. If if we're stressed out, it's really hard to connect with our intuition. Uh, it's a well, and it shuts it down because it's like yeah, fear exactly. stress overrides. Well, it puts you into a fear response, and like it just overrides <laughs> everything else. So then, like you're right, you're not connected to intuition. And I like to tell people like your mind can yeah. justify anything. Your right. body will not. It will right. not lie to you. So if we're not like exactly. in. We're going through life with like. 10% of the information that is useful versus like a hundred percent by like yeah. tapping into body. And it's like, I was talking to Kat before this oh. and we were talking about how like wildly different people are when they become embodied and like how the decisions that they make yeah. are literally so different. And it's yeah. like, it's because they have so much more access to information yeah. versus yeah. when they're like shut off. And then obviously the access to information is shut off. So it's like, exactly. and usually like, and I'm sure you see this all the time. Like when, when people are working on something, it's not typically one thing because this thing will cause a problem here. will cause a problem here. will cause a problem here. So it's like, you may fix one thing and two more yeah. pop up because yeah. there was no room for them to come up before. But now that yeah. this thing is fixed, there's room for these to come up. So sometimes people, and, and I see this with therapy and we work with a lot of chronic health because obviously chronic stress <laughs> causes yes. chronic health issues <laughs> where like we'll fix one thing and two things pop up and eventually we get through all the things somewhat at least getting better um but they're like damn like this thing came up but I'm like yeah that's a good thing like you have the energy and the attention to put on it now where your body was like oh there wasn't any room before right but it can right. be pretty frustrating for the people who like obviously they're the person it's ha- it's like happening for where they're like damn, I fixed my back pain and now my shoulder hurts. And it's like, well, your shoulder has always hurt. Yes. You just, you just really couldn't it. sense it before. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Fixing one thing will fix, it'll like impact all the other systems. Well, but then human bodies are so intricate. So that makes perfect sense. Oh yeah. And then like you, you look at like acupuncture and the meridians and how, mm-hmm. yeah, all the energies all. If There's it's just so much to know. Like, Isn't that fun? It is. It is. And that's what I love. I love about yeah, just just the body and not just being so fixated on on one modality. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I like went from I love I'm grateful that I was in Western medicine to learn mm-hmm. the Western medicine that kind of thing, you know, kind right. of way of doing things, but then jumping into functional medicine and then um diving into like Joe Dispenza's work where it's just like, yeah, understanding like energy, our energy centers mm-hmm. and and our nervous system and how um that's impacting everything and our emotions. And yeah. you know, it's like you mentioning like working on motions. And this is something I've noticed too. My clients, like when we'll, um, yeah, release like some beliefs or emotions or things Mm -hmm. like that, other emotions and things will start to come up. And this is what I noticed in myself too, because I used to have so much tightness in my left trap. (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) And it was, I mean, I would get migraines on either side Mm -hmm. and I would log them and it was, it never seemed to be a pattern, but but what I did notice was pretty consistent was just this, this pain and discomfort yeah. and left trap. And then I realized with the, with, on this journey is that yeah, I do believe motions are trapped in, in certain areas of our body. And for me, I think I just trapped a lot of emotions in my childhood in this left trap because every time I would get a massage when I was younger, they would always go at it. On the yeah. Left left trap they're like oh it feels like a rock I'm like yeah I know I know I know but (laughs) yeah and I knew it was stress related but Mm -hmm. I just I didn't know how to release it and it was tight all the time and I even went to a chiropractor and I love him he's become my best friend Mm -hmm. um and he really helped me just to do a lot of work on my neck but still Mm -hmm. I recognized you know all that was just temporary because I was stuck in that survival state and so until I started to shift out that parasympathetic uh, or excuse me, sympathetic back into parasympathetic and work on releasing these emotions. I'm like, Oh, I had a lot of emotions that I just mm-hmm. trapped yeah. for many, many years. So 
the common emotion, especially in, in the shoulder and neck is fear and anxiety. So there was a lot of that that I had to work through and release. But I also had some some doubt and some guilt also trapped in yeah. the shoulder. So had you I, done Reiki? Huh? Had you had Reiki done? I have had it done once. Yeah. I love Reiki so interesting with that because I'll be like, they don't even touch you at all. For people that don't know what Reiki is, it's like energetic massage, but they like don't touch you. And they're just like, oh, we're releasing all these things. And I'm just like, that shit is fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. When I had it done once, I remember just feeling like energy moving over. Isn't that crazy? um, I think it was like, it was either my heart or my sacral shock or excuse me, solar plexus. I think it was my solar plexus, which makes sense because solar uh, plexus has a lot to do with like adrenals and yeah, and anxiety and stress. And then also (laughs) over my throat, which has been interesting because it was hard for me to really just, just speak about my emotions and how I was Mm -hmm. feeling. And I know like, yeah, I would just, I would just hold everything in and yeah, because I was just afraid of, of what people thought. And right. and also just growing up too, it's like my parents would tell me like, you shouldn't think like that. You shouldn't say that. You shouldn't. Mm. So I would just suppress it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So and so nothing. thankfully I never had thyroid disorders, but a lot of people mm-hmm. with thyroid disorders have trouble just speaking their truth and speaking how they feel and communicating. And um, I do have, or I don't know, I need to go to the endocrinologist and check now, but I did have some, some nodules. Thankfully they're benign, but I almost wonder if it was just apart from that, just mm-hmm. like not being or feeling safe to just express how I felt growing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so thankfully I'm doing the work now. So it doesn't progress in thyroid disorders later, yeah. but there are a lot of people where there's a correlation there. Yeah. You know? so it's, it's so it's wild really- how connected body it is for those things. So- yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many books, you know, like Gabor Monte has, um, when mm-hmm. the body says no, and then there's the body, when the body keeps the score. Yeah. And then there's another book, the emotion code where they all talk about, you know, just like, yeah, not- it's wild how like Western medicine does not link those things so, of course at all. It's so bananas to me. It is yet. So and this is why another reason why I love Dr. Gabor Monte, because he actually goes into the research and learn, and also Joe Dispenza mm-hmm. too. They both yeah. go into the literature, go into the, because there are studies that talk about. Oh, yeah. the oh there's between. studies. Western medicine just doesn't do it. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten to the point where like, mm-hmm. anytime I have a client with a chronic health issue, which is, you know, fairly often because mental health, um, I'm just sending them to a functional medicine practitioner. I'm like, listen, I know you have your specialist, do whatever you feel, you know, specialists have their place. But I said, also go see a functional medicine practitioner because they're going to look at everything everyone is doing. And they're constantly like, well, these specialists don't even talk to each other. They don't know what's going on. And I'm like, you're right. They don't because the system isn't designed to, but a functional medicine practitioner will. So I'm like, bring all your results from all those specialist visits and bring them. And then they go see a functional medicine practitioner and they're like, I had no idea medical care could be like this. And I'm like, yes. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> like it's so different. It's actually looking at the person as a whole. I forgot. Wild. What, you know, so I think, insane. Actually, I think there's a quote by Dr. Gabor Monte where it he talks specifically about that, where it's just like, yeah, you're going to the specialist, but they're not treating the person as a whole. And we they're actually treating, treating the ankle. Yeah. Me. We need it, to right. be like, looking. Yeah. Come we on, need to y'all. look at the person as a whole and not just understand like yeah. how all the systems are related, but like, you know, what's your relationships like? You know, do you, like, are you happy in your family? marriage? Right. Yeah, literally. exactly. Literally. Cause that's impacting how you feel too. <laughs> and that's yeah, what it's I, bananas to me that that's not a common practice. Like anytime it's so funny. Anytime I do an intake, obviously we're asking about relationships and if they're partnered, you know, I'm like, you know, do you have a partner? And they say, well, yeah you know, I, I have a husband or I have a wife and I say, do you like them? Mm-hmm. And sometimes people say no. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I identified one problem. <laughs> like We've identified one issue and I'm like, okay, good to know. Like fascinating. And sometimes people are like, well, what do you mean? Do I like them? And I'm like, you'd be surprised how many people hate their fucking spouse. <laughs> like oh, I know. they hate it. And I'm just like, hello, this is one of the problems, y'all. And it's wild. Um, 
It really is. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's, it's so important, you know, just really diving in and, and building that connection. And I think that's also what's missing too. Like I love yeah. learning about my clients, like my client, like think I'm grateful to do this virtually. Cause like the other day I had a client who had her, her bunny. <laughs> Fun. I think, I think the bunny's name was Mando from Mandalorian. And that's like, oh, hilarious. That's Star Wars. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And it was just so cool. Cause I'm like, I get to see their pets and I get to yeah. see yeah, parts of their, their life that, yeah. you know, like I wouldn't you wouldn't have really... they were in an office. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, I mean, there's the benefit of that in-person one-on-one connection, which is not there anyway in Western medicine because it's like the doctor's in and out, you know, but I also just get to take a peek into their home and their life and, and what things are are like, you know, and just like, like really get to know the person mm-hmm. as, as a whole. Um, Cause that's really what's, what's missing. People are just craving that, that connection. Literally. And, and I know for me, I'm like, if I, if I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with me, I want someone to really like give a I shit care and listen. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So how do people like, how do people hang out with you? Work with you? Yeah. So you can definitely hang out with me on Instagram. I'm there at the Kate Vasquez and that's Vasquez with two Z's, double Z's, V-A-Z-Q-E-Z. Um, yeah, I, I love interacting and talking with people. So if you have any questions about anything, please send me a DM, a direct message, because um, you will hear from me. You're not going to hear from a bot. You're not going to hear from assistant. You will hear yeah. from me. And that's how I just love, love connecting with people. But you can also find me on my website at your, or no, excuse me, at radiantbydesign.com and uh, yeah there's a quiz there there's access to our app and um yeah like i said definitely if anything reach out to me on instagram because i'd love to hear from you radiant by design is such a good name yes i know right it's so good well it was initially radiant health so when i first mm-hmm. started it was radiant health because i was floating in an in, uh, a float tank just really creating this vision of the functional medicine practice that I wanted to create. And I just love the word radiant. Yeah. And for me, I'm like, I just want people to radiate from the inside out. I love that. And that's one of my mantras too. Just like, I'm just this, this radiant light (laughs) or, or I just embody radiance and and send Mm. this, this love out, radiant love out. Um, and really just making an impact in people because when we are connected to who we are, when we feel yep. our best physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, mm-hmm. we radiate this beautiful light and people Facts. feel that. They see it. They feel that. Yeah. People and become so, like Yeah. And, and that was my goal. That was my vision with Radiant Health. But I realized, mm-hmm. yeah, I've, I've just really involved. And I'm like, it's not just the physical body anymore that right. they it's the mental, the emotional, the spiritual body. So, and then, yeah, I just learning about human design. I'm like, well, let's throw that in too. Cause that's Love fun. It. Cause then I really get to know my client. At yeah. A, at a and deeper like play level. with that extra layer. Yeah, exactly. So it evolved from radiant health to radiant by design. Love it. Mm-hmm. Love it. Dude. Thank you so much. You are such a precious. Oh, <laughs> Of course, not that I've never had anyone call me that, but I, but coming it's from you, I'm like, I love Tell it. your so, husband. So say good. honey. Huh? My new nickname, say honey. My new nickname is Croissant. I know. <laughs> and thank you, Amanda. I love you. You're just oh. an amazing human being and just such a you're beautiful precious. soul. So you're special too. <laughs> thank, thank you. Me. Thank you.